What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Listography. Joe here with Jason. And we've got a little breaking news. Well, it was breaking last week, but we're only getting around to it now. Uh, today, we are talking about Pitchfork Rescored. Basically, they came out a week or so ago with a list of 19 albums uh, that basically they're saying we got wrong in our original review and they're adjusting their scores, some better, some worse, maybe to fit today's kind of view of the, the record or maybe they thought they were a little too hard on it in the beginning or too enthusiastic. So that kind of brings us, brings up an interesting point about publications and magazines sort of changing their mind on things. There's lots of famous examples, uh, Rolling Stone giving Nevermind three stars when it came out. Obviously they changed that. Big one from Pitchfork that I always go back to is their 0.6 for Andrew WK's I Get Wet when it came out. Uh, a really, it was, it was a funny review from their founder, Ryan Schreiber. Nothing, almost nothing to do with the actual album. And kind of back in the day, that was Pitchfork's thing. They would review something and they would talk about other things or make it into like a little like screenplay or some kind of uh, take on it that was a little extra than just a review, just to sort of gain notoriety. And giving super low scores to things is another one. I think uh, Weezer's Make Believe got a 0, 0.0 or something like that. And they, they haven't changed their mind on that. But bring us back to this uh, particular rescoring from Pitchfork. They had 19 albums and we're just going to kind of go through them and, you know, talk about how we think about this thing, how we think about rescoring, how we think about publications changing their mind, updating. Jason, do you have any thoughts on this whole kind of topic? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, rescoring is a fine thing to do. I think, I mean, it's the same as like a remaster here. I think every time you listen to something, it's a chance for you to change your mind about how you feel about it. Obviously, everybody's human. And maybe you listen to something once and you're just like not in the right frame of mind, or maybe you're not in the right setting and it doesn't click with you in a certain way. So I'm all for changing scores. Where it gets a little hairy is in when it's a publication and you're not exactly sure who's doing the talking. Like, is the original person who wrote the review the one changing the score is it a new staff now looking at it and saying that person was wrong why why is it changing is it changing because someone changed their mind or is it changing because you want the review to align with whatever the certain zeitgeist is now so yeah i'm not sure about the whole pitchfork thing because the other thing that's really kind of strange about it is if you read the long intro before they get into scoring it they go through the whole explanation of why they're doing it and yada, yada. And then you get to the end of the intro and it says in bold, this is hypothetical. This is not Canon. So they're not committing to the changes even. So like, what is the point of this even? Yes. And it is not the original people who wrote the original articles changing it. So really this is like just a new take on some of these albums. If it's not canon, like if these aren't the scores that are going to show up when you search for, say, Wilco Sky Blue Sky, then it, it just kind of seems like they're just trying to, like you said, kind of like fit the scores into the zeitgeist of how these albums are viewed today. Like I don't think there's anything really interesting about any of the re-scoring. It's all kind of like, okay, well, that's probably what it should have been in the, in the first place. That's kind of the general critical consensus. And that's even more boring than the original ones where at least there was like a point of view, um, even if it was a little harsh or over-enthusiastic, at least, you know, stand up for your convictions on, on something like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I was happy to see certain things get a higher score like the Rilo Kylie, especially the Wilco kind of bum that they knocked Foxygen down a few uh, points. They knocked uh, big boy down a few points, 
but a lot of it, like, I don't think I need to be alerted when something goes from like a seven to an eight by pitchfork. Like, like if you thought it was terrible and now you think it's great, that's worth telling me about, but, but like, if, if you thought it was meh and now you think it's all right, like, I don't need to necessarily read an article about that. Yeah, and there are a couple of examples like that in this rescore, like the chairlift moth one. It goes from a 7.6 to an 8.5. Who cares? That's not noteworthy enough. Um, I mean, they knocked Grimes, Anthropocene, Anthropocene down from 8.2 to 6.9. Like, that's not really breaking news. I think a couple of them are noteworthy, like Daft Punk's Discovery which they originally gave a 6.4, which I always thought was insanely low. They rescored it as a 10, makes sense. Daft Punk Random Access Memories, they go from 8.8, .8, which I always thought was way too high, down to 6.8. Uh, Interpol, Turn on the Bright Lights from 9.5 to 7. Sorry, Kramzer. And they do, the one of their most notorious reviews, Liz Fair's self-titled in 2003, which they gave 0, 0.0, uh, and they uh, talk about the original author Matt LeMay's Twitter thread in 2019 where he apologized for the condescending and cringy review, and it's not a 0, 0.0 album, let's be honest. It's probably like a five or six, which is what they rescore it as, but that's kind of boring. Like Liz Fair getting a, a six now is not interesting, newsworthy, or you know, noteworthy at all to even talk about. It's just sort of now it exists in a world of 30 million other albums that scored between, you know, a five and a seven, and they're just kind of like there. So they're kind of like undercutting their own interestingness by doing some of these rescores. Um, but I guess if they're leaving up the Liz Fair original 0.0, .0 then you know, I, I guess it still lives as a 0, 0.0 in Pitchfork's world. Not really sure. I'm sure they'll probably like change that too eventually. And they do, like with the Andrew WK one, um, they re-reviewed the reissue in 2012 and they named it Best New Reissue and gave it an 8.6. So they'll do that. You know, they'll, someone else will come along, they'll re-review if it's a reissue or something like that. They'll change their mind on stuff, that's fine. I think you can find both of those reviews online as well on the Pitchfork site. So it's not like they're like hiding one and you know, proclaiming the other. So, I mean, it, it happens. It's harder to find like the Rolling Stone, like the old reviews of like Sabbath and Zeppelin where they gave them like one star. Rolling Stone where they gave Nevermind a three star. And you know, things change, but I like seeing the actual like when it happened when this album came out you know rolling stone didn't think nevermind was that great they said three stars like i kind of want to see that because it's like a piece of history like this is kind of what people thought before it blew up and then everybody changed their scores to fives pretty much which which happens the more the higher thought of an album is now the higher score it gets when you get these reviews and these rankings and these you know, the Rolling Stone music guide, stuff like that. They'll, they'll rescore and they'll sing the praises of stuff that once they may not have loved or even liked. I just, I just want to see who scored it. Like even Pitchfork's normal scoring or Rolling Stones, like I forget. I, I think I heard how they normally, I don't think the writers necessarily just make up the score all the time. I think there is some sort of um, consensus that they have to like go through with the editors and like it's discussed internally before a number is arrived at. I'm not crazy about that system. I, I would rather just like this person said it's this. And if someone else in the staff thinks differently, give me their score too. Like just like we do here. Like because I, I, the only way criticism is really useful is if you know the viewpoint of the person reviewing it. And it, I mean, if you align with somebody and know that like, hey, their taste is a lot like mine, that can be super helpful. Like you can, you can know how valuable it is to you. But if it's coming from a publication that is multiple people and it is just put out there as this is how 
this entity that no one really knows what it is thinks about it, then who cares? And that brings up a whole different point that we could talk for hours about. Like, there are no names in music criticism really anymore. It's all just the publication. And you kind of know going into things what these publications are going to think, especially if like the editors are collaborating with the writers to come up with a score that like fits the album. Like, I would rather have like just one guy, like I know, like I know he likes X, Y, and Z, and he's into this genre, and I can kind of rely on him. And I think that's kind of what the internet's kind of helpful for. Like you have people uh, like the needle drop and who else? Who else do we see on the internet? Uh, see yeah. Tranquility. You know, there's, there's, Us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, I mean, there's people that you can kind of know their likes and dislikes. And, you know, it would be stupid for me to go in and review, like, Drake's new album or something like that. Because I just, I don't know enough about rap and all that other stuff. But I think I have a pretty good pulse on, say, Andrew WK's new album if I wanted to review that. Regretta Van Fleet's album. I think I'm qualified for that. And I'd like to think people would respect my opinion. They probably wouldn't, but I, I think I know enough and have been talking about music enough on the internet so that people would, you know, rely on my opinion. If they like the same things I like, you know, they, they should be in tune with me, maybe. I don't know. I think that's the idea, though. And that's sort of what is lost with Pitchfork, especially when they're changing all these album reviews around. You can't trust them. You just can't. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the internet has really changed the role of criticism. I think it's more of a like one-on-one -on -one communication between reviewer and listener. And now like these publications that are a little more amorphous, I don't think they matter quite as much. Um, I still look at Pitchfork almost every day. I'll go there and see what they're reviewing and what scores they're giving. And maybe I'll check something out based on something I see on the site. So, so it's a useful tool. I, I do, I don't have anything against Pitchfork, but to change specific scores, especially if you're not saying it's canon, makes very little sense to me. I don't really see the point because I don't know why you're changing them or, or anything. <laughs> to give Pitchfork a little credit, I do think they hire good writers, even if I don't agree with them most of the time. Although lately I've been finding myself in agreement with them more. I don't know if that says more about them or me, but good writers, I don't know any of the staff names because they're not important, but uh, they, they hire good people and good writers and they have a discerning ear for what they want to hear and that's, that's fine. Uh, but it's it's a good guide. I like to see what people review. I go to Metacritic and Pitchfork and Rolling Stone just to see what people are saying. Uh, usually before we do an album review or even past albums, I like to check out you know what all the the bigs are saying about certain things. So it's useful. But in this case, rescoring it not not that useful. I don't think for anyone other than to bring people to the site to read that article, which is what it's for. Yeah, ra rather than doing this article, I would have much rather them just put, you know, the, they always have the circle with the score in it. I'd rather see like the original circle with the score on the thing and the new one next to it and the name mm. of who decided each of those scores. So that's really, that would be the most helpful. And then you can update the scores as often as you want and just keep all the scores right there and everybody can know. Um, that would be a better system than this dumb kind of a clickbait article, which is now a clickbait video on listography. Well, I love that idea. And if anyone from Pitchfork is watching, you should do that. Credit Jason, send him a check, just a couple grand or something like that. Nothing, nothing crazy, but okay. Well, I don't know if any of our commenters and viewers actually read Pitchfork. Hopefully They've seen this article. We'll put it in the video description if you want to check it out. Go there, see what you think. Do you think they should do this more? Do you think they should do this less? Do you think Jason's idea about having the different scores right in the, you know, in the headline when you're reading an album review? What do you think of Pitchfork? What do you think of music in general? Just what do you think? Leave it in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, uh, hit the bell for notifications. You can check back on Tuesday. We'll be doing the national, not me personally, but Jason and Cramser. 
So be sure to tune in for that and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.